Hey everybody, welcome into this video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. Today we're coming at you with another video editing tutorial. I'm trying to do one of these every week. It comes out Wednesday or Thursday. And we're going to talk about basic video editing, kind of the tenets of basic video editing, the stuff you need to know to get started editing video in Premiere Pro. Um, and I would venture so far as to say that these ideas are generally going to hold true with any semi-pro to pro-level video editing application. So without further ado... Let's jump right into this right here. I've got Premiere Pro open here. I've got the start screen. Uh, and the first thing I want to do is go on ahead and create a, a new project. So I'm going to create a new project. I'm going to name the project. You can see the name right up here. I'm just going to name it test hyphen uh, project. That's probably good. A location here, users, Nathaniel, that's in desktop. That's me. That's fine. I'm going to go to desktop. I'm going to ignore everything else. We're going to try to keep this pretty simple. I'm still going to get into a reasonable amount of detail, but I'm still going to try to keep it somewhat simple um, so we don't things don't get out of hand. All right, I'm going to hit OK, and it's going to open up Premiere Pro. We have absolutely nothing here. There's not even a timeline on which we can edit because the first thing we need to do is over here in the project area we need to drag our media into Premiere Pro so Premiere Pro sort of links out to wherever you have the media stored on your hard drive and you need to establish that link with Premiere Pro so it can say all right I can link out to this video file and play it through Premiere Pro where you can go and chop it up and edit it uh, here within Premiere Pro let's go out here to my finder where I have some video clips and some audio so I'm gonna select the whole bit here Hit Commander Control click that DS store we don't want to drag that in. I'm going to drag it over and drop it on the project uh, uh, window or panel, whatever you want to call it right there. Now, there's a couple of ways we can go ahead and create a timeline. So in order to create a timeline, you can uh, straight up create a new what's called sequence in Premiere, or you can create a sequence from a video clip. So as you can see, uh, Premiere is saying, look, drag media here to create a sequence. So I could just drag video out and drop it there. We could also just right click on the media and choose new sequence from clip what I typically would do. Or down here you can select the new item button and just choose sequence and you can set up your own custom sequence. So let's say you know you've got all this digital SLR stuff which is great. You got all kinds of other pre-built options as well. But if you're shooting like 30 frames per second on your standard 1080p DSLR, this is probably what you want to use. You can go into settings and change anything you want. You can make the frame size much larger or smaller. You can see it's going to be your aspect ratio, 16.9. Great, that's what I want. Um, and you can, of course, name your sequence. I'm going to cancel this. I don't want to do that. The reason I don't want to do that is because it's so much faster to just create the sequence from the clip if you know, as in this case, all of these clips were shot the same day. So all the sequence settings are going to be the same. I am going to right-click on this, and I'm going to choose New Sequence from Clip. You're going to see it's going to pop my clip out onto a timeline, and now we can drag all the rest of our clips out here as we need them. So let's talk about editing some video. First things first, navigating the timeline. We've got our audio track. We've got our video track. Great. At any point, we can grab our video track. We can make that larger or smaller. Well, you can't make it any larger than it actually is. Uh, but we can make it larger or smaller. You can do the same thing with the video track or probably the preferred method, select both, and you can edit them both together. And you can do this with either side of your clip. It's a very quick, easy way to kind of suck it in, make the clip smaller and trim it that way, or make it a little bit larger. We're going to talk about other kind of faster ways to trim things as well in just a moment. I just want to get you acquainted here. Uh, you can also, we can like grab this little uh, divider on the audio clip. We can drag down on that a little bit, and we can really reveal more of our, you know, audio waves, and we can see, all right, we're definitely picking up a lot more noise here toward the end of the clip. That's great. Uh, I'm going to hit the little letter M for now. That's going to mute the track. I don't want to hear all of this, especially while I'm recording this tutorial where you and I are hanging out doing this video editing. Um, but I, I still kind of want to keep it there. I don't just want to straight up delete it. So that's the reason I'm not deleting it. You could just select it and hit the delete icon or the delete button, excuse me, and you would delete it. Commander Control Z to undo that. I don't want to delete it. Uh, you can also use the plus and minus icon, uh, icons. Why do I keep calling them icons? Plus or minus keys, and that's going to zoom you in or out of your timeline very quickly, very easily. Uh, it's so fast and so easy. I virtually never use the magnifying glass. So let's talk about dragging out multiple clips. I can just grab this. Uh, I'll grab this clip here, wake port, uh, wake port side. I'm going to drag it out here uh, and put it on the end of this clip here. But you can see there's a whole bit of black because the clips aren't up against each other. I can select the clip, and I have this little magnet icon turned on that's snapping. So when I move the clip close, bam, it just snaps right into place. Great, and you can see because the whole track for the audio is muted, I'm not going to hear the, the audio for this wake port side either. Now something I want to do here is I want to zoom out because I want to pull this clip way over here. I want to actually make this clip come first. So we're going to begin with this clip, and then the bow of the boat is going to come second. All right, so there we go. Our clips will kind of flip together like that. And now as I'm watching through this, I can make a cut or I can make this maybe a little bit shorter 
by just highlighting the entire bit here and just dragging this clip back maybe to like here, all right? So then the, the, this clip is going to be about eight seconds long. It's just seven seconds and 27 frames. Um, I could make it exact if I wanted right there. And because snapping is turned on, it's going to snap right to my playhead. Great. Now to get rid of this little bit of space, you can simply right click between the clips and choose ripple delete. Again, there's a number of different ways you can do this. Uh, one of the ways you can do this is also, let's say we make a cut out here, and you can make cuts in your video by using something like the slice tool, or you can use under sequence this add edit command. I'm just gonna use the slice tool for now. So I would slice both of those things there, grab my move tool, that's the black arrow here, and you would select that entire clip with the audio clip, and you can go edit, ripple delete. So what ripple delete is gonna do is it deletes the clip and moves the basically moves the clip next in line back against your previous clip so you don't have a black space let me undo and, and illustrate this see if I just select this and I just hit the delete key when I delete it I now have this big black space but if I use ripple delete right which is uh, I've got a hotkey set for it, the letter X it's going to delete and move the next clip in line back and it moves your entire timeline back so even if you have multiple clips everything gets moved back it keeps everything in order the way it's supposed to be it's a beautiful way to edit ripple delete good stuff and like I said uh, this hotkey X is not default so you'd have to go into the the, uh, the keyboard shortcuts and change that if you want and actually I'll share a couple of those little hotkeys with you now because you know hey why not so when you're watching through your video you can see right now we've got you know 20 what 26 seconds of footage when you're watching through the video sometimes you're not gonna want to sit here and just you know I'm waiting for this I'm waiting for this waiting to see if anything goes wrong you can hit the letter L and it speeds things up and you can hit the letter L another time even it speeds things up even more that's a great way to quickly move through your footage now the reason and I mention that is because I've set some keyboard shortcuts. I have over here under sequence this add edit button. I added the keyboard shortcut Z. And by the way, I'm doing that with Premiere Pro uh, file or menu up here, keyboard shortcuts. And then in here, I just type add and it's the add edit right there. And I just set it to Z. When you do that, it's going to like trigger this little error that says, hey, this is the zoom tool. Are you sure you want to replace this shortcut? I almost never use the zoom tool. I use the plus minus to zoom in and out. Uh, so I just say, yeah, I've got no problem changing that. And the same thing with ripple delete. So you type in ripple and right there, ripple delete, I set it to X. The reason I do this is because it's nice Z and X are right next to each other. So as I'm watching through, if you can imagine with this hand, I have my J and L. So I'm speeding through uh, my, my video clip and I can even drop down and hit the letter M, which will drop a marker on your, your timeline. So you can say, hey, there's a, a position of interest where I need to get back to later. Uh, but also it frees up my other hand so I can hit Z and X to make cuts and make ripple deletes as I'm kind of speeding through my video watching things. So let me just take it for a test spin here. So I'm going to hit the letter L once, twice. Twice. Let's say I want to make a cut there. I hit the letter Z. Great. Letter Z there. And then I can just pause it for a quick second, highlight that, hit the letter X, boom, ripple delete, hit the letter L twice. Speed me back up. And let's hit the letter Z there. Hit the letter Z there. We're just, you know, there's not, there's no real reason why I'm making these cuts. It's just to show you that I'm making these cuts. Uh, in fact, I'm going to grab this little bit here and I'm going to hit the letter X to ripple delete that. So we've got a couple little cuts here. Um, in fact, maybe what I'll do is I'll select this bit and I'm going to delete that. Let's drag another clip in this one right here. Um, what I want to do, I want to get to the point where this ship is kind of passing my boat a little bit closer. So probably like right about there. So I'm going to make my first cut there. And my next cut will be right about there. All right, so once I've done that, I can select this bit on the end, hit the delete key to get rid of it. Uh, I'm going to select this bit here. I'm going to hit the letter X to ripple delete that. You can see it just moves it back to the playhead. So you can even right click in here and just choose ripple delete and it's going to pinch it right back to the, uh, the last video clip. So now we kind of have three little clips all lined up. We've got the audio muted. So let's talk about, now that we've looked at that, let's talk about syncing this up with a little bit of audio and kind of moving those little cuts to mesh with our audio. So I've got this little track here. I'm going to drag it down onto another audio track that's incidentally not muted. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and I can see a couple things based on this information. I'm going to make my little uh, track a bit larger. I can see that there's one type of music it looks like right up until here, and then something changes. So maybe we will uh, we'll make our first cut happen right there. Uh, in fact, if I listen... Yep. 
Okay, so I've got two cuts right there. So that's our little, our two cuts in the video, right? We've got both of these cuts. We're going to make both of those cuts happen in rapid conjunction and work with the audio track. Here's how we do it. Check this out. So, well, there's a number of things we can do. We could, if we want to save all of this port side footage and maybe just speed it up, we can do something like look where this is. We can see it's at two seconds and four frames. So we could select the port side clip. We could right click and choose speed duration. And we could set the duration to... 2 and then 0. Point, was it 0.4? I already yeah, 0.4. It's right there. Duh. And hit OK. And it's going, you can see it's going to speed it up by 234%. So we're not losing any of that data. We're just speeding the entire clip up. Sometimes it's conducive to the to what you're doing. Um, if not, obviously we just covered how to actually make cuts in our clip. Of course, you can right click here and choose ripple delete. Let's check this out. So we're doing the sped up version. All right, that looks pretty good. What we want to do now is when we have the, the music change as it just does, you know, as it just kind of did right there, right there, when that, when that little bit of trumpet or drum or whatever it is hits, we want to have our passing boat scene uh, come into play. So let's, uh, let's just go through this here. All right, so right where that happens, I'm going to hit the letter Z, but check this out. When I hit the letter Z, it trims my video, my audio, and the audio down here. I don't want to trim the audio down here, so I'm going to undo this. Commander Control Z. The way I can control this is by deselecting the track. So I'm just going to deselect that A2 audio track, all right? And I'm going to hit the letter Z again. You can see it just trims my video, my audio right there beautifully. I can select this whole bit, hit the letter X. It's going to ripple delete it, and it's going to cut right to this scene. So let's just watch through this real quick. Very cool. Exactly what we're looking for. So you can see we just synced up those couple cuts, bam, bam, right with where uh, the audio changed. Now I'm going to give you a little example. Let's say we fouled this up, right, and the, the cut was way off. Okay, so it was off by, you know, a, a half second or so like that. You can use this rolling edit tool right over here, and you can just select. Well, I would move the playhead right to where the cut needs to be, and the cut would need to be right there. And you can move the entire cut. So it's going to actually shift both clips with that cut. It's, it's difficult to explain, but you're not, you're not stretching anything. You're not making anything. Um, you're not really breaking anything. You're just actually shifting where that cut is. And, and, and Premiere is smart enough to automatically move both clips at the same time. So then you can check it out. Looks great. So that's exactly what we want. Now, once we've made a, a series of edits like this, we probably want to export the video. Before we actually get to exporting, I want to talk a little bit about in and out points. So with Premiere, you want to set your in point, you want to set an out point, and these are the points. Um, it gives you a very controllable sector of your timeline, which you can export. So it's sort of like being able to uh, highlight a selection in Microsoft Word and then telling Microsoft Word, look, only print those letters that I selected. It's, it's essentially the same thing here in Premiere Pro. So what we can do to set an in point here on under, I believe it's sequence, uh, maybe it's marker, yeah, uh, yeah, mark in, mark out. The hotkeys I and O for in and out, as you can probably tell, those are that, that's what I use. I almost never use the menu. So I'm going to hit the letter I, and you can see what shows up here. I'm going to turn, I'm going to select the A2 audio track as well. Uh, so I've set my in point, but the out point is just kind of perpetuity. Well, it at least goes to the end of the clip, which means that, or the end of the audio clip, which means that if I export and I choose and I tell Premiere, hey, export my in and out points and everything in between, I'm going to export this whole thing but let's say all we want to do is export to the end of this well what I can do is hit the down arrow key it's going to take me to the end of whatever clip I, I have selected depending on what tracks I've got selected up arrow key takes me to the to the beginning of the clip down arrow key takes me to the end once I'm at the end I can hit the letter O and that's going to be my out point so now when I'm exporting this video I can tell Premiere just export my in out you know sequence the in out points ignore everything else on my sequence and Premiere would then export this 18 second and change uh, video file Let's take a look at lining up some clips and editing kind of in another pretty interesting way. This is particularly useful if you're editing an interview or uh, almost some kind of reality type TV show. Maybe you're vlogging, something like that. I'm going to hit Alt or Option and the letter X. That clears my in-out points. I'm going to zoom out a little bit and I'm going to delete the whole, uh, the whole kit and caboodle there. One of the cool things you can do, and let's begin with the port side shot again. We can double click this and it's going to open it up in our little source uh, window up here. And we can set an in-out point up here in our source finder. So we can start playing through our clip. Uh, let's say we're playing through it and we're like, all right, we like that right there. So I'm going to hit in and then I'm going to place an out point like right there. Once I've placed an in-out point up here in source, I can hit my comma key 
and it's going to move the clip, just that little bit of it, from the source area down to my sequence timeline, wherever I have, as you can see, my playhead. So I'm actually going to undo that, move my playhead back to the beginning position there, and I'm going to hit my comma key again, and I place that little clip. As I keep playing through this, I can say, all right, then I want to go there and like there, and hit comma, and it's going to add that little clip and stack it right up. So now down here I can play this, and I can see I've got two clips of the wake the boat's creating on the port side. Great. Uh, then I want, let's go passing, passing by the tall ship here. We can play this. All right, so that's a good end point. Let's play through this even faster. I just use the L hot key. There, O, oh, great, comma, whoop. What I did there, I didn't have myself at the end of my clip, so I'm going to hit the down arrow key. There we go, I'm going to hit comma and place that there. Now, if you do overlap a little bit, and as you could just see here, if I hit comma again, what it's going to do is Premiere sort of splits the video clip and leaves uh, the bit on the end, so it essentially drops the video clip in between and pushes stuff out, which can be incredibly helpful if you just need to drop something in and you don't want it to kind of cover anything up. If you do want it to cover something up, I believe the hotkey is the period, yeah. So period, you hit period, and it, it's going to drop your video wherever you are and cover stuff up. So And you can drop as many instances of this clip as you want. And it's super fast to edit this way. Let's just go to the end of that video clip. Uh, we could go to like passing under the bridge now. We can start playing this. Let's go with our in there. Let's speed this up a bit. And let's go with our out, like right there. We can hit the comma key, drop that in place. We could select this, right click, speed duration. We could, you know, double this up. We can maybe make it 250%, a little bit more than double speed. All right, just something like that. So you go from there. Uh, to this nice, we're passing under the bridge super fast. And you can just go through and edit this really, really quickly this way. It's such a fast way to edit. And again, you can drag your music in, and the, the, same, uh, the same stuff applies. So we can watch this. We can grab our rolling edit tool here, and we can just drag this right back to here. All right, so our first edit happens right there. Uh, we can drag this guy back to, like, right here. So our second edit happens there. And we can play very quickly. And it's so fast, you can build these files out in Premiere Pro. We've really covered two different methods of basic video editing here in this short video tutorial. There we go, an auto-save. Hey, just in time. So now that we've done all this work, we probably want to export an actual movie from this. Uh, maybe what I'll do is I'll find another place to sync up some audio real quick. <laughs> So once I've got it synced up, I just added one little cut there real quick. I'm going to set my in and out point. So I can actually set my out point first right here if I want. Go ahead and hit the letter O, move all the way back to the beginning, hit the letter I as my in point. We've got our in and our out point. Now what we can do is go File, and we can choose Export and choose Media. Note the hotkey Command M. That's usually what I use. And by the way, you have to make sure you have your sequence selected, like you're not over here in your project bin. You have to make sure your sequence is selected, and you can hit Command M, and up will pop your uh, export settings uh, dialog box. There's a lot of great presets. Um, there's some good YouTube, you know, YouTube 1080p, YouTube 4K, Vimeo as well. So there's a lot of good presets, and these do, you know, relatively high quality video. If you're really picky about your video, dive in, really experiment, see what looks good for you, do some research on the internet. I could do a, a massive tutorial on compression and codecs and everything like that. But I know that those presets are pretty good. In fact, let's just go with the YouTube 1080p. We're going to get our file size right down here, 27 megabytes. That's great. You can look at all your junk down here if you like. Uh, the output name, if you click on that, you can choose where to save this. I'm just going to save it to my desktop, and I'm going to call this uh, Boat Ride, something like that, .mp4. That's fine. Go ahead and hit Save. And the other important thing is your source range. So this is where I tell Premiere, look, choose my sequences in and out points and export that. So I'm going to select that, and then I just choose export, and it's going to go through, bada bing, bada bang, bada boom, and in 24 seconds, this bad boy will be exported, and we can take a test look. In fact, I'll overlay the video here at the end of this video tutorial so you can see exactly what we got if you're interested. So... For basic video editing in Premiere Pro and for some what I think are insanely useful hotkeys and some hotkeys that you can program yourself as far as that Z and X trick, uh, working with sequences and video clips and syncing up audio, making your cuts, the rolling edit tool, and so many other things, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. Daniel Dodge from I'll catch you next one.